Hey, Bitcoin traders checking in on the crypto space and the altcoins. It's a robe life kind of day. I'm going to go over how I am currently trading this market environment. And we're also going to look at a couple altcoins, Bitcoin pairings and key weekly setups that I'm watching over the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned. So first things first, I want to talk a bit about the dollar. We know the dollar weakness that's been sustained over the last few months has been a big reason for the strength in assets across the board, whether it's metals, stocks, or cryptocurrency. We know the bearish dollar environment is best case scenario for the cryptocurrency bulls. We are in free fall on the daily time frame for the dollar at the moment. The RSI right now is at 20. It did drop lower. It dropped down into the 17 range back in July. But aside from that, this is the lowest RSI in years. So just keeping that in the back of our mind, bearish the dollar is a pretty crowded trade. Doesn't mean it can't keep dropping. Doesn't mean I'm bullish the dollar or bearish assets. It just means this is when I start paying attention for the inevitable short squeeze that's going to happen in the dollar. I have no idea if it's going to happen in a week or in six months, but I know it'll happen eventually because again, it's such an overcrowded trade that eventually everybody will go to one side of the boat and that boat will quickly flip. I'm looking at other RSI levels, the weekly chart. It's currently at 31.7. And if I look back historically, I can say, okay, in the last 12 years, the RSI has dipped under 30 about four times. And when it does, it usually goes to about 25. So it, it's gone to 25 to 31, let's call it, four times in the last 12 years, maybe five times. It doesn't mean we can't go lower, but again, I just look at historically where we bounce in the past and I know, okay, we're starting to head to that zone. I know 88.25 is a very key support level that I'm keeping an eye on. And I know that if we keep waterfall dropping towards that 88.25 level, all of these historical RSI levels are going to be lining up at that support. If we bear flag our way down, it'll be different because we'll be cooling RSI off and that daily chart did just form a bear flag and that's exactly what happened. One more time frame, the monthly. RSI on the monthly time frame is currently 33. If we look back historically, yes, it can dip a lot lower. It dipped down to 20 in 2008. But I can say that in the last 30 years, the monthly RSI has only gotten oversold four times. So again, it's not common. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but it's when we start looking for those bounces. So one more review. What happens when we are in those extreme RSI levels on the weekly time frame? How do we usually snap out of it? And if we look back at some of the biggest drops back in 2003, 2004, the bears had complete control. Look at how fast that shift in momentum was. So again, same market environment, bears in absolute control for what feels like forever. But when that boat flips, it flips fast and hard. So it happens significantly then. And there's a couple other times where it happened very significantly coming off of an extremely weak environment, even back here in, in 2018 to go t plus 10% over the course of half a year, it was a very notable shift after dropping this significantly. And this is pretty much a very similar drop here from 104 essentially down to 88 and from 103 down to 89. Now, a lot of people are going to say fundamentally this time is different the, with the virus and the printing of the money and all that. And again, that is absolutely the case. But all I know is that when everybody's looking in one direction of a trade, it starts to make me nervous and I start to pay attention for the other direction. So over the next few months, I will be watching for signs of a weekly bounce in the dollar. And I'm going to be paying attention for it. And I'm going to be watching very closely how that bounce in the dollar impacts stocks and the cryptocurrency space. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm watching for the, the daily oversold bounce to see if that marks daily consolidation in Bitcoin. But as of right now, it's ideal, ideal scenario. So I'm not doing anything. It's just me being observant. So looking at Bitcoin, it's beautiful. The bulls are in complete control. We just had five minute oversold. So I'm going to use it as an example of how I trade this crypto space. So again, I've got long-term no touch positions. 
I've got swing trade positions and I've got day trading capital. That's how I'm splitting things up. So I am always able to maneuver around. So at this point, I've got my Bitcoin swing position and my ETH swing position. And I am looking to add to it on dips. I love playing oversold bounces, especially in this environment. And we know our back burner trades. If you don't know what those are, Google chart guys back burner. But our back burner trades, first five minute oversold, first hourly oversold are the bounces that I'm looking for. And we just got first five minute oversold. So this is how I play it. We dropped down and it wasn't clean in the sense that I like a straight waterfall drop. And here was a scenario where we dropped down and saw this green candle. And it's a little bit of a fake out because you look at that and say, well, is that it? Did we, did we touch 30? Is our people front running first oversold? And then we dropped down and said, okay, that is clearly our first oversold RSI. When we were at the bottom of that candle, 22,400, that five minute RSI was clearly down in the twenties. So I was patient. I didn't act on that first little drop. And I acted on this second drop and I ended up being a little bit late because I wasn't staring at it for these couple candles and I market bought at about 22,600, still pretty good entry. And I market bought about a third of the capital that I have lying around waiting for this. And I bought a third of the capital just in case things got extreme. If we just flushed down under 22,000, I want to be able to layer in my scaling in so I'm not buying the top, so to speak, before daily consolidation. So I entered a third. And as soon as this daily bounce gets going, or the, the five minute bounce, I was actually watching it on the two minute time frame. As soon as this bounce gets going, I sell under the two minute EMA. That's a conservative sell. I sold half. Why did I choose there to sell? Because if we were going to remain weak and if we were going to keep dropping the lower lows, we would reject from that EMA, just like we did on this little attempt, and see another leg down. So by selling at that EMA, I sold for about $250 profit on half a position. So if my entry is 22,600, my break even is now 22,350. So what I do, I sell half on the way up here and I now put the second half of the position stop under 22,400. And I say, okay, that's that. I have no risk on that portion that I just added. If this is a four hour bull flag and that is our low being hit before continuation, I now have an increased swing position size to benefit from that continuation. If this is not a bull flag and we see further pullback down to the EMA 12 support, I will stop out of the additional Bitcoin that I added. I will have no loss on that trade. And then I'll be back to the position size that I'm comfortable riding the ebbs and flows of this breakout in. So I have a bigger position now, but... I don't have any more risk than I did before this trade took place. So that's the way that I'm trading this. And if I were bearish, I posted in the chat room here, this is a beautiful equilibrium setup. Let's put the mindset of a bear. Again, I, I don't trade the cryptocurrency space bearish. I am still on Coinbase, FDIC insurance, and I just love paying their fees. So that's where I'm currently trading. But if I were shorting, this is a beautiful top fish. It's a 15 minute lower high as the most likely scenario because of the size of the range and because we are not seeing increasing bull volume on the way back up. So I can do a number of things. Number one, if I wanted to sell initially and I say, oh, that was our dump and I, we just pulled back over $1,000, I should have sold. There's your chance to exit some. If I could short, I would top fish, you know, as a hedge position. Let's say I'm long five Bitcoin. If I wanted to be really aggressively protective of that position, I short this move. Let's say I get filled at 23,400 and I put my stop over 23,750 or let's call it 23,800. So I'm risking $400 and all I'm risking is profit because if we keep going up and see a new all time high, I stop out of the short and it's essentially what I call an insurance play where I lose $400 of profit, but obviously I have more profit than I had after I got stopped out because we're at new all-time highs. If we don't get new all-time highs, I'm pretty much locking in my gains at that 23,400 level. And then if we keep pulling back and break this 15 minute equilibrium bearish, I can eventually cover that short and end up having really nice profit. So those are a number of ways to play it, shorting or hedging at that resistance, but it was just a very high probability trade due to that setup. Now we're watching for a 15 minute higher low. If I wanted to be an aggressive bull, I'd scale in a couple entries here using 22,400 as a stop. And we're going to anticipate a equilibrium is the most likely scenario. 
and looking for it to break in a few hours. If this 15 minute tightening range breaks bullish, it's a potential four hour bull flag and the all time high is in play. If it breaks bearish, we are then gonna look for a four hour higher low still. Odds of a bull flag will decrease and we'll be looking to test the EMA 12 support. So again, it's just a question of, does this consolidation favor continuation? Is it brief? Do we see all these little oversold bounces get bought? Or is it significant enough that we're gonna look for a four hour tightening range? Altcoin bulls are almost hoping that that takes place. And if I am looking for an altcoin trade or looking to get into the next altcoin move, I'm gonna wait on this pullback. I'm gonna hope for a bigger pullback. I'm gonna hope for a test of the four hour EMA. And then on that four hour EMA, when it looks like a four hour higher low is shaping up, that's when I'm entering the alt space for that higher low. And then ideally, certainly not a guarantee, but ideally we then see a sideways Bitcoin range that allows for some profits to filter out into those altcoins. So all depends on your style of trading. And it's important to recognize that in ourselves. But I'm right now going for that bull flag. And if it's not a bull flag, no harm done. And we'll look for that four hour higher low. It's a great response to that first five minute oversold bounce. I mean, to go over a thousand dollars from first five minute oversold conditions is great. That being said, it's now out the back burner trade window. Some people now look for the 15 minute RSI to get oversold. I personally am not as confident in the 15 minute. I look for the hourly from here and we're nowhere near that happening. So not really on the radar unless we get an all out dump to be looking for hourly oversold. So 15 minute time frame is the one to be watching at the moment. Bitcoin dominance chart. So big break on the daily. We're coming up to key 6746. That's the highest dominance that Bitcoin has seen in seven months. So that is very notable. If we reject, it's a weekly lower high and an equilibrium. And if we break, it's obviously weekly uptrend continuation. So it's a pretty important level to be watching in the short term. And you will find that when we have pulled back here on this dominance chart, two times distinctly on this move up. The first was right here, and that was last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, and the second was obviously right there, and that was this morning at 5 a.m. Eastern. What was Bitcoin doing? We talked about it last video, sideways trading. So let's go to the half hour on Bitcoin, and let's look back at yesterday at 6 p.m., and it's this period of sideways right here, two hours of sideways, altcoin saw a solid leg up. And then right here where we saw a range established and then we traded sideways within that range for a few hours. And during that period, all coins ran again. So we're keeping an eye on sideways ranges and we're watching to see, does that lead to altcoins getting their turn up? So right now in this moment, we are seeing the dominance chart tighten up on the 15 minute. But if we start to drop down here, that's going to show us, yep, Bitcoin's 15 minute equilibrium is giving us a little altcoin push as we trade sideways. ETH USD did get a bull break on its US dollar pairing chart. Again, I care when I'm looking at altcoins, I want to know the Bitcoin pairing. I want to know if it's outperforming Bitcoin or underperforming Bitcoin. I want to know where my best place to be trading is. ETH BTC has a very clear bear break here. And it's notable because there's a lot of altcoins that are not breaking bearish this significantly. This is a pretty big setback. This weekly time frame now is still looking at this low 2629. Where is that? Just saw four hour get crushed 2629. So we are still holding that level and that is a must hold level for the weekly higher low. And bulls obviously are hoping that this four hour oversold bounce can get some momentum going hourly tightening range, potentially shaping up. We're watching for an hourly equilibrium but again, the bottom line is this is a very notable leg down. And let's look at Litecoin and XRP because they are showing us what the altcoin bulls want to be seeing on their pairing. LTC, BTC, the most notable time frame to be watching bigger picture is the weekly because we are still in a weekly downtrend. We broke the lower high resistances, but we have to see this higher low hold and a bull break of 5059 to confirm a weekly trend change. This would be very notable for me if that were to take place. Otherwise, it'll just be an equilibrium and tightening range for another month or two, but it's worth keeping an eye on it. And XRP and LTC, they appear to be trading a little bit of hand in hand in my observation. We can see XRP BTC is forming a weekly higher low as well. Off the EMA 12 support, I love having that as a guide when looking for a higher low. 
And it's the same thing. Can we confirm follow through or do we see a tightening weekly range for the next few months? What stands out to me is look when the bull move started on XRP. We traded sideways here and then it's like all of a sudden yesterday at 6 p.m. a spark was lit and it was just boom, big move, big volume started pouring in and a very notable shift in the market environment. So 6 p.m. December 16th. And we look at LTC, BTC, at that same period in time. And it was right here. So the volume spike, again, out of nowhere, just nothing going on. Look at the volume, and then look at it just snap right away, big surge, same point in time. So that's the period where Bitcoin started trading sideways. But it's notable to me that two of the strongest altcoin Bitcoin pairings that we saw were both XRP and LTC, and they happened at the exact same time. And I've noted that before between these two names, where they were both significant laggards. They both saw a bit of a short squeeze before this crazy run took place. I don't even remember off the top of my head when that was, probably referring back here to, I'd have to look at it on the daily chart, but probably referring back here to maybe even October. Could have been November. Either way, they both did it at the same time and it was notable to me because they were the weakest of the altcoins that I track and they both saw that big shift at the same time. So again, the short-term moves on these daily timeframes, it's a green candle on LTC BTC and XRP BTC is also seeing green the last two days as the direct opposite of the ETH BTC big red candle. So doesn't mean B, doesn't mean ETH BTC cannot bounce on the four hour oversold bounce. But again, it's just a comparison of showing that over the last day, those two altcoins are performing a lot better than ETH currently is. And now we'll see if we get a shift back for ETH to take a turn to try and set this weekly high or low, because it really needs to do that if ETH is going to stay in the topic of conversation for me. Link BTC again, and also just want to show this is just continued free fall where the bears have complete control and it's a very different environment. On XRP and LTC, we're looking for weekly higher lows on their Bitcoin pairings. Link is essentially, it's not black dirt breakdown, but essentially treating it like that, which is how much continuous downside there is. And BNB BTC, I haven't looked at, same thing. So it's almost like you can pair these coins off where LTC and XRP are in a grouping and now... BNB and Link are a pair and they're doing the same thing as well. And that's how I compartmentalize coins knowing, okay, these charts are very similar. These pairings are trading to each other. And I do that in the stock market all the time with different sectors and just watching how the sector rotation is always going on. So that's how my mind is, is keeping track of these coins that we just went over. Let's check that Bitcoin 15 minute equilibrium. It's working on the higher low. Watch for the volume to keep dropping off. We'll get real tight. And then we'll see a spike in the volume indicating the break has taken place. And that's the pattern in the short term. Keep an eye on the 15 minute. I hope you're well. Do good things. Establish your game plan. It should be established at this point, but reiterate it to yourself. Go over it. Remind yourself. I find that I'm looking at my profit too much and it's trying to influence my decision on things. So I stop doing that as best I can and try and stick to my game plan and allowing myself to trade with this cash that I have set aside for it. It's, it's much easier for me to leave everything else alone because I am acting on the short term opportunity of volatility, but not touching what I plan on holding until the daily uptrend is lost at the least. So that's where we stand. As soon as I place that oversold bounce market order, I thought back to 2017 and what I used to be doing, and I honestly have no idea how I was that insane. Literally a thousand percent larger positions, I would have market bought that five minute oversold. And I just can't imagine in this current environment, in my current moment, I can't imagine the mindset. I was going for it. It's pretty wild to think back on. Not this time around, doesn't mean the same opportunity isn't there, but just not for me. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Do good things.